Uh, thank you, and thank you very much for the opportunity to be back here. Yes, as you've just put there, um, obviously there is a disclaimer. If we could just move on to the third slide. So what the lake is focused on is the battery material supply uh, side, particularly lithium, but there's no mining involved in what we do. This is just water treatment using clean technology to produce high quality products with very low impurities and doing that in a more sustainable and responsibly sourced way. Uh, where a lithium developer, um, we're in the middle of a definitive feasibility study at the moment, we'll be moving into construction finance this time next year at the end of that uh, detailed feasibility study and, and having a um, having a demonstration plant running on site. So it's a pretty exciting time and you can expect to see a lot of news this calendar year and next calendar year. If we have the next slide, please. So the, um, the interest and the reason that we focus on this space uh, is basically summarized in this slide. On the right-hand side, you'll see the growth in mega factories. Now these mega factories are factories that produce large amounts of lithium ion batteries. Last year, there were 70 scheduled. In December, there was 181. That is a massive amount of growth. And of those 181, 118 are actually operating. So that beast has got to be fed. And the, uh, the materials have got to go into it, lithium, nickel, uh, manganese, things like that. That is, um, that is important. But we've seen this story, and uh, actually I presented here on Share Cafe for the very first time late last year, just after we'd produced some uh, very uh, high quality results. Yet it's only been until the last few weeks that we've seen the lithium price start to move. Uh, November, December, we saw the complex go up about 11.5%, spot pricing for carbonate go up about 20%. And now in the last two weeks, we've seen spot pricing for lithium carbonate go up another 15 to 20%. So that's why there's a lot of interest in the sector right now. Next slide, please. What we're focused on is using a better way of producing a very high quality product. And so we've gone back to water treatment. That's all it is uh, in, the, uh, in the lithium triangle of Chile and Argentina. You've just got dry salt lakes. Think of um, Death Valley in California or some of the salt lakes you might think of in, uh, in outback Australia. But underneath the surface, that salty water also has a certain amount of lithium uh, that's dissolved in it. What they do at the moment is they bring it up to the surface and evaporate that water and take the salts out of it. What we do is a very uh, common water treatment uh, process called ion exchange. That's just been adjusted slightly so that you take the lithium out of the water. The beauty of it is you get all the lithium out, uh, 80 to 95%. It happens in the space of two and a half hours, not months or years. You produce a very high priority, high purity product because you're just taking the lithium out and we're doing that in a cost competitive, scalable and environmentally friendly way. Next slide, please. So graphically, this is basically what it looks like. To summarize this slide on the left-hand side where you see that tank or module there's about 50 of those in full production. They replace the evaporation ponds. Everything else is exactly the same. But as I mentioned, because you just take the lithium out, you produce a very high purity product that that gets converted into carbonate. And because we're using iron exchange, where you just bond these little iron exchange beads with the lithium, there's no chemicals involved. So we can just release the rest of the water, which is 99% of it, the, the salty brine, it can go back to where it comes from. And this is a great outcome environmentally and for local communities. Next, sli next slide, please. What we've done at the moment is we've tested this process in a pilot uh, plant module in California. Uh, we would have had one on site last year if not for the pandemic. I and mean, we're gonna keep operating that pilot plant module all of this calendar year and sending more brines from our site down there. But the beauty of this process is now that we've demonstrated it works on pilot scale, it is only um, a relatively small scale up to full production. Now, normally for most commodities at this stage, you're looking at maybe 50, 100 times scale up. But here we're talking single digits. Why? Because what happens with water in one tank is gonna happen with water in 20 or 50 tanks. And that's really the beauty of the work we've done to date and was our focus uh, last year. And, uh, and we're pretty happy now to be heading straight first into a definitive feasibility study. Next slide, please. 
So just to give you an idea of where, what, where lithium comes from at the moment, in the top left-hand corner here, you see what looks like um, evaporation ponds in the north of Chile, in the north of Argentina, in the lithium triangle. So just imagine you're sitting there, you're looking out across the horizon, there's 10, 15, 20 square kilometers of, uh, of evaporation ponds. That works very well because you're using the power of the sun, you concentrate uh, the salt because the water gets evaporated, but then you have to separate out the lithium and more and more the, uh, the battery industry is looking for high quality. On the other side, you have a hard rock mine. These can be smaller or bigger. They look a little bit like a gold mine. But what we do is just imagine that same salt lake, but you've got a physical footprint of one or two city blocks. You return virtually all that water back to where it comes from. This is a great outcome. That's why we're focused on it. Next slide, please. Um, we've been able to show in our pre-feasibility study that the operating cost is about the same as other brine producers. Uh, lithium brine producers are generally somewhere between $3,750, $3,800 a tonne, up to $4,200 a tonne. Our uh, modelling in the pre-feasibility study puts us at $4,170 a tonne. That was using a very high cost of, um, of energy. And uh, we're talking to solar hybrid producers now to perhaps lower that operating cost uh, a few hundred dollars a tonne. But the beauty is because we're producing a premium product, very high quality, we can sell that at a premium price. And uh, that's really where it becomes quite exciting. Next slide, please. So where are we? All of the uh, lithium brine producers are in the north of Chile and north of Argentina. All of the big five companies, Albomal, SQM, uh, live Vent, Tianqi and Gengfang all either run operations or have significant uh, equity interest in operations. You see that orange circle at the south, that's the one I'm going to be talking about, Kachi. It's our flagship project because we own the entire basin. But we also have uh, projects alongside Orocobre and uh, another company called Lithium Americas with their joint venture partner, Gengfang. As a matter of fact, we're the only junior in that area of Kauchari and Oloroz. Lithium Americas has a market value of $4 billion for half of that project, or a cobre north of a billion dollars. So we're well uh, located amongst the majors. We also have a very large property position, 220,000 hectares over five, uh, four projects. So that's a pretty significant uh, lease holding in a 100% basis. Next slide, please. So in Kachi itself, it looks like any other salt lake. We've got a significant resource, 4.4 million tons. What that means, is uh, using this direct extraction process of 25,000 tonnes per annum, that's about 8% of the market, we can produce that for 25 years and not even use 20% of the resource, and yet we can expand this resource laterally or at depth. To give an idea of that, uh, that leaseholding package, uh, particularly for our American investors, that's the size of the entire New York City or 12 Manhattans. Next slide, please. And so the benefits are it's large and expandable, the method we're using is also modular and expandable. It's cost competitive. It's a very high value, long life um, uh, a project at the moment based on our current modeling. And that's looking to get a whole lot better. Next slide, please. So this year we've commenced our definitive feasibility study. Uh, that's a mock-up of what the plant would look like. Really the only thing that's different to other brine evaporators is that letter A on the right-hand side. That's a shared or warehouse with, um, with 50 or 60 modules in it for direct extraction. The rest of it is pretty standard, but as you can see, then you don't need the, um, the evaporation ponds going across the horizon. Thank you, next slide. Uh, so it's one thing to produce a high quality product. Uh, we were very fortunate back in, in um, October to uh, be able to announce that we've produced the highest purity product that anybody we could find was able to produce at scale. And that gets us um, the entree into some of the household names in the cathode battery and electric vehicle space. But to ensure uh, that occurs, we're working with the well-known company called Novonics here on the ASX. They've been running battery testing now for more than the last 10 years out of uh, Dalhousie University in Nova Scotia, Canada. They worked with every big name you could think of. And uh, it was great that they're now taking our high purity product, putting it together with other cathode materials and making batteries, cells and packs out of that. Uh, and then that makes our discussions with, um, with off-takers much better. 
because we don't want just any offtaker. If we can actually get a tier one offtaker, we know that that essentially guarantees our future and the capacity to scale up. Furthermore, Novonix just this week announced the return of Dr. Jeff Dahn. He's one of the legends and icons of the battery technology space. He's actually returning to the board of Novonix, maintaining his activities in Tesla. And Tesla have extended their, uh, their um, uh, financing to Novonix out until 2026 to access that technology. And as all of you know, um, it's helped by the company you keep. This puts us right uh, along line with, uh, with the sorts of companies that we need to be talking to. Next slide, please. So quickly on our production timeline, definitive feasibility study this year, environmental uh, and social impact study. We'll be running a demonstration plant on site. We'll keep that pilot plant running in California, but we aim to have one on site probably in the second half. Uh, the results will be coming out of Novonix, demonstrating how well this works in batteries over the coming months. And we aim to have a feedback loop and how we can perhaps even improve upon that. We'll continue to send samples off to potential offtake partners. And then uh, by about this time next year or, or half one next year, we aim then to be finalizing financing and getting into construction. Next slide, please. And so quickly on the company, you heard Tim mention, we've had a, a reasonable run in our share price. That's been helped a lot by the fact we have an OTC listing in, uh, in um, the United States and we've had a lot of buying out of there uh, recently. That's helped our share price. We are playing a lot of catch up. I will be very blunt. Um, you heard the previous producer talking about biotech and health. We're basically in the clean tech and new energy space. Those areas have got a lot of interest in the US. Um, now the funds under management have picked up from about 15 to 33% looking at ESG investing and we're pitching right into that. And uh, just go through the last slide to the, to the very last one, next one please. And so in summary, clean technology, high purity, responsibly sourced. This is a 21st century solution to batteries for electric vehicles. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Steve. Um, always good to, to hear an update. Um, so in terms of the lithium market and lithium pricing, what, what sort of encouraging signs are you seeing in the, the lithium markets at the moment? So uh, when I was last on here, I'm sorry, I can't quite remember what it was, but it was latter part of last year. We've been talking about what was just so obvious at a macro scale that uh, uh, electric vehicle makers kept announcing new models. Battery makers kept announcing new plants that were building. And the amount was coming out, just Tesla alone on Tesla Battery Day back in September, they came out with a number that immediately doubled the amount of batteries that are going to be produced in the next 10 years. And so at some stage, that's got to feed to the upstream, lithium, nickel, etc. cetera. Uh, and I was wondering what it's going to take. We saw finally after about two and a half years in the toilet, we saw lithium prices pick up in November, December. And now the start of this calendar year, the spot price, in particular out of China, has gone up significantly. And that has awakened interest in the whole sector. Secondly, we saw the EU announce in uh, December 10 that from the middle of 2024, all of batteries have to have a, uh, an ESG uh, CO2 footprint going in there. We fit perfectly into that space. And then last of all, with the Biden administration coming into the US, most people are expecting more funding to go towards renewable energy and towards electric vehicles and charging stations. So I think that's helped the, the overall sector. But uh, look, at the end of the day, we're, we're in that more clean tech space with an ESG benefit. So I think we get actually, actually uh, an extra tailwind as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a question here, you know, we are starting to hear more and more about that direct extraction through that ion exchange in both the lithium and the nickel markets. Can you, know, can you talk about your competitive advantage in this kind of clean tech um, so, area of the market? So uh, in, um, on, the, on the TSX in Canada, uh, there's a company called Standard Lithium and they have a project in the United States. They're also using direct extraction. Um, they've been running a pilot plant, which they call a demonstration plant. And they came out with their results in December their method is slightly different to ours, but they came out the results in December with very high purity lithium carbonate, 99.92%. In October, when we came out with our results at 99.97, people I think suspected that maybe that's not right. Maybe that can't be true. Now there's another peer who's doing the same 
their market value since middle of last year has gone from 50 million to 550 million. And so I think that the penny starting to drop that this is a space to get into. Um, specifically with Lake, we like the lilac technology. We have, as I mentioned last time, exclusivity over key areas in Argentina. Um, we're working with them to long-term to develop this project, but uh, specifically in the lithium triangle, what we see as the benefits is one, you return all the water back to the, its source. Two, its actual use of water is quite low. Uh, three, it occurs at ambient temperature, so there's no heating or cooling. And then four, like the other direct extraction methods, it produces a very high purity product. Look, with the interest in the sector at the moment, I suspect anybody at our stage and development stage will probably get funding, but there certainly are some questions going forward as to whether other brine producers will continue to attract that funding. And um, the agreement with Lilac, who is your technology partner, how long is that for and does that preclude anyone else in Argentina from using their technology? So it's a long-term partnership and it's for the life of this, um, of this project at the very least. They provide beads and their technology to ensure that we end up with a great outcome. Uh, there are exclusivities over key areas. We've left them to be able to develop this technology in the US. And we hope that they do so. Uh, but the big brine projects are here in Chile and Argentina, and it's just easier to get projects permitted in Argentina. There is a benefit in coming to market first with this, and there's also a benefit that this project can be scaled up. Uh, and over the next uh, little while, there will be more information that we'll be able to share publicly about a much closer and more transparent union between those two entities. And, and uh, there's a question here on, you know, what, what's your kind of timeline to production? What are the major catalysts um, mm. that um, we should be looking towards? Okay, so uh, just on the timeline, as uh, mentioned on that one slide, this year, the focus will be on the definitive feasibility study, environmental social impact assessment, getting those finished uh, separately, getting the results back from Navonics, seeing if there's anything that we can do to even improve upon that. We're looking at ways where we can improve that quality perhaps to 99.99% uh, because high purity is very important to the off-takers. Um, together with that uh, results out of batteries, then we continue to talk to cathode makers and battery makers, some with new technology, uh, some that are, are much larger. So it, it's quite likely we'll be able to say something about some of those household names I've been talking to right across up to electric vehicles. I can tell you that because we've got this ESG benefit, there'll be some news to share on that. And, uh, and I must say the interest that's coming out of the US uh, they really get this whole space and uh, and I think um, that will help us significantly as they expand their battery production, cathode production, and uh, we see more and more EVs in the US. And, and uh, Steve, just one last question. Um, your high purity samples are obviously uh, with Novonics. Have you sent those to any other potential off-takers? Uh, yes, we've, we've sent them to off-takers. Uh, Novonics isn't an, an off-taker per se. They're demonstrating that this works in batteries so that we can demonstrate to everybody else. Uh, the problem is uh, when you deal with off-takers, it's a fairly opaque uh, process and also can take quite a while. We're small, we're not, in, uh, we're not in production, they're very large. So by demonstrating that it also works in batteries, that makes the EV makers more comfortable. And so we've been saying to them, if you want this in your supply chain, you know, put us in contact with your cathode and battery makers. So we're doing a bottom up as well as a top down approach. And that's certainly been resonating more recently.